Hello and welcome back to the Scale Muddling Cafe. My name is Jamie and this is part two of the F14 Tomcat build. Uh, so the cockpit. I've removed the parts from the sprues and as you can see I'm removing the raised detail with some Flory model sanding sticks. Um, this is because if you saw the first video, the introduction, I'm going to be using the Quinta Studios set. So there we go, all nice and smooth, ready for the Quinta decals. Now the instrument panels, um, some of them had some sort of recesses that the sanding sticks couldn't get into. So I'm using here a, an X-Acto blade. As you can see, it's a little bit bendy. So I'm just using my finger at times just to support it. Just scrape away that detail. And you can use the tip of the blade as well, just to sharpen up in areas where maybe the sanding stickers accidentally rounded things off a little bit and there we go instrument panels ready a little bit extra there to do ready now for the cockpit tub so the side consoles are separate they were sanded flat as well the detail actually in the kits really nice but Nothing can compare to these sort of modern 3D resin printed decal things. Um, I had written on the back the part number so I didn't get mixed up or confused. And then once they were all sanded and smoothed out, I just used some ammo of MIG, um, sort of extra thin, just to glue them in place. The, the brush is really good for this job. It's really precise. A little bit of pressure just to get rid of any potential gaps. There we go. All done. Right, next up is the photo etch. So I'm using Ammo's slow dry black super glue or cyanacrylate I suppose is I don't know if that's how you pronounce it maybe and I'm just squeezing it out onto a little bit of just the sort of wax paper that you get with the self-adhesive um, photo etch in the Edward set just move that out of the way so I don't lean on it and this glue is really good because it's an extended drying time so you have time to manipulate the parts make sure they're in the right place so I'm just going to test fit here. Now these parts were removed um, with a knife and then just sanded with the flory sanding sticks. Just make sure you put the, the tip of the tweezers right next to where you're sanding so you don't bend or damage the part. And I'm just using an old X-Acto blade just to spread the glue. You see, you don't need much. You don't want it oozing out. If it does, no drama. You can just use some Super glue remover, and just brush it away. But they're a very thin coat, and we can just put it in position with the tweezers, gently press it in place, and there we go. It's in. Test fit, yeah. Now actually, this didn't quite fit this bit, even though I just did a test fit. I just speeded up the the video here just save a bit of time um, so I did have to go in and with a sanding stick very gently sand just to match the contours other, otherwise it was sitting a little bit proud maybe because I sanded a little bit too much off when I removed the, the details but these bits really add that extra finesse the cockpit is a focal point of a model and uh, I always try and add some extra detail if I can and that really does the job a little finer bit of fettling I'm a bit fussy when it comes to this sort of thing but there we go and that's going to make quite a bit of difference that right on the instrument panel I've just mounted it on with a bit of blob of blue tack or white tack onto a um, scalpel handle blade 
and I'm just adding the rudder pedal detail here. I've added the glue to the to the actual part here, the rudder pedal and the mount. That was all, I think that was all one part oh, and it's all been bent up. A little bit of discoloration there from the annealing. But as you can see, the, it's not quite in the right place. And that's the, the advantage of using this glue is you do have, sorry, <laughs> sniffed. Um, you do have extended working time there to get it all into, into position. Now I actually knocked these bits off um, uh, later on, but hey ho, easily repaired. Um, now, when using different mediums, resin, photo etch, plastic, it's a good idea to to prime. I think just to just to make the base all one colour, it makes it the painting easier, and there's not much risk then of uh, of it looking a bit odd. So. I'm just using Mr. Surfacer 1200, just thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Very thin, and you can see it dries very smooth. And it's just homogenizing the uh, the different materials there, ready for the uh, the base coat. Now the base coat I used was a mix of MRP colors to color match the base of the Quinter Studios decal. Um, although as you see um, I didn't really need to in the end um, but more of that later um, but just a very light coat and you can see it's very close in tone to the Mr. Surfacer um, Mr. Surfacer is a little bit sort of duller, greyer the cockpit colour is, is a little bit sort of bluer so there is a little bit of contrast there instrument panels next and this is this is the advantage of of priming it's all one color although actually most of that is going to be is going to be covered up with the 3d decals and don't forget the inside of the fuselage holes not much of that is going to be seen but we are going to be adding some detail later as you're going to see right on to the main event then I guess and the Quinter Studios 3D resin printed instrument blah. Now, I bought this set and built this model before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, so please don't get upset that I'm using this. I know some, some people may. Um, but it was all done before. So it's resin, sort of 3D printed colour resin onto standard decal paper um, so you need to treat it like decals I'm just doing a bit of trimming here with an exacto blade and there you go just get rid of that excess um, and then what we're gonna do just dip it in the water just for a few seconds that's not overly hot water it's just warm water and we'll just let that sit now just to, so we're not sitting around waiting I'm just going to remove the next the next bit we want to use just cutting away the lettering otherwise you know that might float about and sort of get in the way as it sort of releases from the backing paper and just take that off and we'll uh, set that to one side while we just test see whether it's released and it has so what I do with these is there's no real adhesive on there so not like a traditional decal so you need to remove it and then glue them on uh, you need to apply glue so I'm just removing a little bit of the water always a good idea with everything really is to is to test fit we'll set that down now the glue I'm using is um, Ammo's ultra glue it's it's not a white glue, I think it's resin based and it dries crystal clear and rock hard. And actually I, I will quite often use this for photo etch. But I'm just using a micro, uh, micro brush here, add a little bit to the part, uh, uh, the sort of cockpit. And then as you can see, because it is a decal, it's, trying to, it's just trying to curl up. So I'm just gonna use the tweezers 
just to flatten it out so I can apply the glue. Don't need much, just a thin bit. And oops, drop it onto the onto the cutting mat. We'll put it in place. And then you've got a fair amount of working time actually, just to push it around. And even though it wants to curl up, the glue straight from the bottle is sticky enough to prevent that. A little bit more on the on the cockpit tub going on, and then we'll just put the other side on. So you don't need much glue, just a little bit, and it doesn't matter if it oozes out because it will just clean up. I'll just normally have a another micro brush on standby, and um, with a bit of water, just uh, and then you can just wipe it away then. And there we go, that's the first two bits in place. Uh, just use it, scraping a little bit of excess glue off with a cocktail stick there. And there we go, first bit's done. Right, with the side console, you can see there's quite a bit of sort of cockpit colour. And I'm just going to trim that away. Um, it would be nice... Ooh, just nudge the camera. It would be nice if... They didn't do that if they either printed it on clear or even better just didn't print it at all and that way you wouldn't need to color match um, the sort of very fine bits in between the, the the panels yeah that's no drama you're not really going to see see them if they're a slightly different color but anyway it's no it's no real drama just to cut this away and then you don't have to make such an effort to colour match with the cockpit. So I'm just going to dip it in the water again, just a few seconds, set it aside. Let the water do its thing. And again, saving a bit of time, we can go in with the next bit. There we go, dip it in. Now you can see on that on the set there, there's quite a bit of, um, quite a large number of parts, including seat harnesses. So what we do, we just slide the, the bit that we want away, stick it on the cutting mat. This one doesn't want to curl up so badly. Just apply the glue, spread it around a bit. Make sure you try and get it to the edges. Now this is going to go around the throttle quadrant, which I could have painted black first. In fact, in hindsight, I should have done. I did do that later. But it fits really well here. And you can see there that bit at the back where the coloured part was. I've trimmed that away. And how good that looks. No colour matching required. Bit of a result, that. So the pilot's done, time to move on to the Rio. Now I've already soaked this and a little bit of a different technique I thought I'd try is rather than trying to remove the, um, the sort of coloured cockpit colour bits first, I'm actually going to do it later. Now that's a very sharp blade but there's no worry in the decal um, for want of a better word, sort of ripping and tearing. It's, they're actually really quite robust. So they will take a bit of, quite a bit of um, manipulating and sort of cutting and bending and, and whatnot. They're pretty resilient. So obviously this is kind of making your eyes bleed in 72nd. It'd be far easier in 48th. And I am going to be doing a Tamiya Tomcat at some stage so I've ordered the Red Fox Studios set for that so just removing that tiny piece there and then you can see again absolutely no problems whatsoever in in color matching there's only a tiny little bit of color left and even if it's slightly off you're not really going to notice it especially after 
the weathering and washes and varnish coats and blah 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 so it doesn't matter if it's sticking to the tweezers like that that's no problem because you just put it into place and then just hold it with your finger slide the tweezers away and then again you've got time to just move it into position just like that a little bit of pressure just to push it down into place and now we're all done as you can see I didn't move the numbers on that one but hey we survived get that little bit out of the way and now we can cut this away as well just like the last one I suppose in hindsight, I could have could have hit forward wind on this, couldn't I? But um, anyway, it gives a good idea of how long it takes. It's actually fairly quick. And this is one of the most enjoyable bits, I think, because you really see the cockpit coming to life. And these 3D printed instrument panels are just astonishing. It's a sort of proper game changer moment when these came out, it really was. In fact, the first set I get, got was um, one of the early sets for the Zvezda 172nd scale um, MI24 Hind, which you may have seen on my Facebook page. Um, and that was a case where a product came out and I was so keen to use it, it inspired me to actually buy the kit. So I bought the aftermarket first and then went out and bought the kit for the aftermarket. Normally it's the other way around, isn't it? There we go, just putting that into position. Now here I'm just using the knife blade. This one sort of started to sort of curl up a little bit. So I just used the knife blade there just to slice it up a bit, just to help it bed down, get rid of that air bubble. And that did the trick. And that that's sitting nice and flat now. And there we are, side consoles complete. Um, now you don't get any real detail in the cockpit, um, on the cockpit sides. So these bits that are supplied in the um, Quinter set are really rather handy and I'm just sort of holding the cockpit tub in place just to make sure I get them in the right position again no special technique here just exactly the same as before and even though not much of that will be seen um, it definitely fills the void as I said before the cockpit is a bit of a focal point um, and it does look a little bit strange when those bits are, are missing, but there you go, that fills the gap nicely with all that amazing detail. Right, I've speeded this up um, just to save a little bit of time so the video isn't too long, and now I'm just making up the instrument panel. Now the pilot's panel, this one, and the Rio's panel are made from lots of different um, elements. Um, and they all individually have to be applied, but no drama, it's actually, I think, really good fun. Um, and seeing it all coming together slowly, but you can see I'm applying the glue there with a cocktail stick, because it is so small. And there we are, 
pilot's panel done. And here's the finished cockpit. And as you can see, the um, that sort of 3D effect that you get from that printed resin is absolutely brilliant. Way better than Color Photo Etch. And Color Photo Etch, you tend to get that sort of dot matrix um, effect, and you don't get it with this. Now I just went in with a with a light wash just to add sort of a little bit of grime um, and some tones. You can put the wash over the, the printed decals, absolutely no problem. And then it all gets removed with some odorless thinner from Ammo. The wash is a mix of oil brushes from Ammo. And here I am just, just cleaning up the residue. Again, that's a nice close up of those sort of side consoles and the circuit breakers on the back, absolutely amazing. And what I do is I just blend away the excess, um, but try and leave some, so it acts as a bit of a filter and just sort of blend it all in and it all merges in together. And that looks really good. The, um, the detail there from the photo etch you can see as well. And you can see what difference that makes. And then on the cockpit bulkhead behind the pilot I just did a bit of vertical streaking just with the wash that's there because you, you do get rain marks and things like that in the cockpit um, and it, it creates a nice sort of grimy effect and you're not going to see much because the pilot seats um, the ejection seats going to be in the way but it just it's all about layers when weathering like this and even though you may not see it the first time, your eye kind of picks up on that on that depth of finish. Just going to go in, just move a little bit of the wash from the highlights there. And there we go, pretty much done. Now I had to go in again with these bits on the front. Um, just removing the wash from the from the high points there. Now you can see there's some circuit breakers right at the very front from the printer set. More of that in a moment. But I'm just going in and removing removing the wash from the high points, and just keep working it. And if you remove a little bit too much, doesn't matter. You just go in and apply some more wash, and then start over. Not a problem. nice 3d effect on those on that structure as well and the wash just brings out a little bit of extra contrast there because it is dark there is a lot of shadow in that area it is below the cockpit seals and they're not that big so hence that's why there's a bit of extra contrast and now you'll note that's the pilot's instrument panel going in with no um, photo etch diesel on it, no rudder pedals because those sticky out bits from Quinter um, actually meant that they didn't fit and knocked off the rudder pedals so I ended up having to go back in and glue them back on and they didn't quite fit because those those um, decals printed decals got in the way um, in hindsight I wouldn't bother putting them on because there's no way you're going to see them because the gaps filled up with the rudder pedals but there we go rudder pedals in and now for the combings this is the sort of final bit so I've already painted um, the front part in a buff color because it was canvas the rear part in a very dark gray and I'm just using a, a black wash just to make that detail pop there's some photo etch there on the on the Rio's bit no photo etch here on the pilots bit not required just gently applying it don't need too much and we'll just let that dry and then just remove the excess so excess removed and now I'm going back in with a dark brown tone 
Again, made from oil brushes. A little bit thicker wash this time. And now we're just going to have a little bit of fun. Just trying to make this look a little bit more 3D. So I'm just applying this, this wash, dark brown wash, because this was canvas. And we're just going to try and sort of introduce some full shadows and things like that. And you'll see me in a sec um, when I come to do the highlights. But full shadow, so just at the bottom of the part, in any recesses along the join there with the black just to make that 3D 3D effect and we're just gonna let that dry off and then we'll blend that um, with a brush moistened with thinner not too much because we don't want to remove too much we just want to blend it in and leave it there so that's it all being blended and I've now we're going to go in with some buff and now for the highlights so this is oil brusher and i i just used a, a smaller brush an older brush just because it, it's a little bit easier to apply because this part is actually really quite small so i'm just applying the the oil paint just to the highlights along the edges along the sort of creases and now we're going to come in with a clean brush and we're just going to blend that. This is a dry brush and we're just going to blend that in. And I went back and forwards a few times actually with the highlights, a little bit too much, a little bit more low lights, highlights, low lights, low lights, sort of backwards and forwards until I was pleased that I'd finished and I'd, and I'd got the effect that I was trying to achieve a little bit like figure painting really um, this so I guess you could use acrylics for it but uh, we're using oils here onto the Rio's bit there you go and just using the same brush so there's no more I haven't put any more oil paint on it this time this is like old-fashioned dry brushing technique but it being oils, it, it blends a lot better than sort of if you're going to use acrylic paint. Although more on acrylic dry brushing in a moment. But I've just added a tiny little bit of more product on there. But literally the tiniest amount. And we're just blending away. And there we go. It's picked up the sort of highlights and all blended in quite nicely there. And again, it's a to and fro process. So if you need, if you think you need a little bit more, add a little bit more. So just putting a little bit more neat oil paint on there, and then we'll just blend that in. Here's the dry brush to give that bit of blendage. There we go. Oh, not quite done. So that's quite a sharp edge there. So I've just gone in again, just with a little bit more of the paint, just to exaggerate that a little bit more. And the trick is knowing when to stop. Okay, now I just mentioned dry brushing acrylics and this is using Ammo dry brusher acrylic paint. And I was very skeptical when I first saw this, but it's really good stuff actually. And you can see there it's just with the mid gray, it's just highlighting that raised detail, some of those few tiny photo etch bits. And we'll do a bit on the front. And it will just catch the edge. And these dry brushers paints um, I know I'm a bit of an ammo fanboy, but they are really, really good. And I can highly, highly recommend them. Just taking a little bit more there, just to make sure all that detail pops. And that's going to be under a windscreen, so it's a little bit exaggerated. And there we go. 
And here's almost the finished cockpit. So I'm just going to glue on the combing parts. Now in hindsight, I think I would have left off um, that rear bulkhead and the Wizzo's instrument panel and combing because then it'll be completely flat. Um, so you can come in and when the model's built and you're going to start painting, you could just mask off very, very easily the cockpit without all these sticky out bits on. But hey ho. Um, just popping on the uh, the Rio's bit there. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. Again, using the ammo stuff with that really fine brush. Really is brilliant, that. And with that brush, we'll just go in and just touch in very carefully along the edge, just so we don't dissolve any of the paint. You don't need much glue there at all, and you certainly don't want it oozing out, and you certainly don't want to slip and, uh, and wipe off the paint. Bad woods will come out. And then just a bit of pressure there, just remove the gap, and there is the finished cockpit. And I think you'll agree that 3D resin printed Quinter stuff is, is absolutely awesome. So there we go, that is it. That is part one over, the cockpit. So join me on the next one, uh, where we're gonna actually build the airframe and get it ready for paint. So thanks very much for tuning in, and I'll see you on part three.